Yesterday I was at um, running errands before Sabbath. How many of you sometimes see that that clock is ticking down at sunset and you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off? Anyone? Okay. Luckily for me, that happened several weeks before, so yesterday I was kind of on top of it. Was at Safeway, and we're walking into Safeway, and my wife and I are walking in, and this guy's walking in, and this guy kind of looks at me, and he looks at my wife, and it was kind of like a strange look. And I was like, hmm, interesting. So I, we walk in, as we're walking in, he's turning around, I think like he was looking at Reagan, I'm thinking, okay, some dude thinks my, um, likes my wife, that's cool, whatever. Didn't know he really liked me. I'm going to fill you in on the story. We walk in, and we get our stuff, we're getting ready to leave. He's waiting us by there by the exit, and I'm getting ready to leave, and he walks up to me, and he goes, hey, aren't you the pastor of the church over there by the library? And I said, yeah. He goes, you know, my wife and I watch you. He goes, my name is Dallas. Dallas is a young black man, about 32 years old. And he said, we really appreciate, you know, you sharing the word. And I said, why don't you come tomorrow and visit if you'd like? And he goes, why, what's going on tomorrow? And I kind of shared with him. And then he opened up his heart and he goes, you know, my mom died several years ago. And as she died, I lost all of my foundation. He started to cry. As he started to cry, Though he was black, I did not see him as black. I saw, I saw tears going down his cheeks, and I saw someone who was hurting. Someone who was in pain because he's at a spot now in life where he never wanted to be. And I said, can I have prayer for you? He goes, yeah. And the Lord gave me a prayer that so touched his heart that afterwards he gave me a big hug and he says, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll share with you. Dallas didn't come today. It's okay. The Lord is with him. What he needed, the Lord gave to him. So what I'm trying to tell you is we as a people need to look at people and the pain that they have and begin to minister to people out of our comfort zone. Look at people as this is someone Jesus died for. It's easy to minister to the people that we can easily connect with. But how about those that we don't connect with? I want to challenge all of you, all of us together, let us be a group of people that when people say, you let people know that you go to the Antelope Church, that they could, it's a good reputation. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know that place. And if they don't know of that place, you will be the instrument that God will use to bring them to come in contact with Christ. I am thankful to say, red, yellow, black, or white they are precious in Jesus' sight amen Devin come up front Devin it's about time you made it you were gonna be in trouble with me you guys really fast I just wanna I wanna introduce you to someone I know some of you know him some of you don't come here buddy Devin, as you know, graduated from boot camp. He has a long way to go. He has a long way to go. <laughs> um, he had lots of struggles. You know what? None of our families are perfect. Can you say that? And uh, Reagan and I sat him down several times and we told you, your hope is in Christ and you need to be able to go to the service to get some discipline and some structure in your life, to have an opportunity to have the Lord use you. 
I want you to share really, if it's okay, you guys share, share just a little bit of testimony, what has happened over the past several months. I want you to, this is your, God has, God, God has given you this opportunity. Um, let's see, um, I had a job, uh, they let me off for about five months. I didn't want to do anything, I hated school, didn't graduate school, didn't graduate high school. I uh, wasn't going nowhere good, started uh, doing bad things with my life, uh, just angry all the time. Um, Pastor Mike sat me down one day, and I didn't want to see him because uh, lately I just wasn't doing good, and I know that he was going to gonna be on my head about things, and he was going to tell me things that I've heard many times before, I'm just not choosing to do it. So uh, I sat down with him, and I was already thinking about going to the military, just trying to get my life right, to do something to get away. Uh, right at this time, like my grandmother and my grandpa were always on my head about everything I was doing. Um, I kind of wanted to be out the house. They were always telling me how they want me out the house, but I know as soon as I left, they were going to be like, oh, no, no, stay, it's okay, we miss you. But I, I know I had to get my life together, so uh, I told Pastor Mike, hey, look, like I'm going to go to school, and I'm going to sign up for the military. And within those two weeks that I told him, uh, I got a call from the Marines. And they told me, hey, look, like, we know you don't have your high school diploma. We're happy that you're going to school and trying to get that. But we have an opportunity for you, you know, and uh, this is a once in a lifetime. So these are the things you need to do. You need to pass the test, pass the drug test. Um, you need to come down to see us. You need to make sure you do these physical tests to see if you're healthy enough. Uh, you also need to take a blood test, everything like that. Did all that. I ended up passing. They told me, okay, cool. Now you have a month till you go to boot camp. And uh, this is the only time you have a opportunity to go to boot camp where you're gonna have to wait a year. So I told uh, Pastor Mike uh, that I was going and we made sure of it. I went to boot camp. Um, it was hard. Uh, like I went there and I told myself like, I'm gonna be very patient. And I was patient for the most part, but like within like six weeks, like a lot of people get on your nerves and you end up snapping. But uh, the moral of the story is that, I mean, God has a plan for me, and I'm thankful that he uh, blessed me with opportunity like this because he knows where I could have been or who knows what I could have been doing in life right now if I wasn't here. Um, so I just thank him for that. And right now, I still got a lot to work on, so I'm not going to talk like I'm perfect or my whole life changed. I have a lot of things to work on, but I'm thankful for the opportunity he's blessed me with, and hopefully I can grow still. And that's all. I read his letter. He sent a letter to the family, and I said, send it to me. I want to read it. And I think one part of the letter said, yeah, my drill sergeant's really hard. Now I think I can take mom yelling at me a little bit better. <laughs> Something to that effect. Isn't it, isn't it interesting how when we're young, <laughs> we don't see things in the proper way? And we need these, ex these little experiences in life to begin put us on the right path. Devin, you're on the... You're on the right path, but you need, now not only are you going to be serving our country, but you also need to be serving the God of the universe as well. Amen? Amen. Let's have a prayer for him, and then we're going to close, guys. Father, we thank you for Devin, and we thank you for what you're doing in his life. By no means is he complete. This is a lifelong journey. But we ask that you empower him to be able to, that he can make the right decisions. He can choose. You have given him that gift. You have given humanity the gift to be able to choose between right and wrong. And we can do that because the power of Jesus. Without Jesus dying for us, none of us would be able to make that decision. But because of his death, we can choose to say no to the enemy. We ask that you give Devin that strength to honor you. And we ask that you give us that strength and may we willingly choose to honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you guys. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Years are taken from my life in trade for a moment of sin. Oh, I'll be glad when When my life begins again